I think if you're going to run a, okay, I'm going to really challenge myself cardiovascular, I'm going to start training hill sprints, or I'm going to start to incorporate, you know, something, whether it be sled drives or whatever it is to work, increase your work capacity. I'm also going to then pull back on some of the things that I'm doing in resistance training. So I'm just not throwing everything at the body all the time, because I think that's a mistake that people make because most people don't just want to get better at cardio or just want to burn fat. They want to have muscle, be lean, be firm, be yeah. quote unquote tone. You know, they want to have that look or that feel steel still while they also add in this cardio. But you have to understand that, that you have to modify that. You should modify that also. Here's a curveball: Cardio can actually help you build muscle. That's right. <laughs> Cardio can help you build muscle. We're just going to confuse our audience. I know. Like, <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> ah! So like an episode the No, so I want to be very clear here. Um, the, our issue with cardio is when that becomes, when cardio is used as the primary foundational way of burning body fat. And the root of that is that people value cardio because it burns calories, which means they ignore the most important aspect of exercise, which is the adaptations. Okay, so what does this have to do with what I'm saying? If your VO2 max is so poor that it's impacting your strength training, like you can't do the, the amount of reps or volume or training because you're gassed. Yeah, fatigue sets in too early, you can't get through the set. That's it. Then it's impeding your ability to build muscle. I've experienced this myself. I've gone for, and now I do lots of, I do some conditioning, which helps with this, but I remember in the past, I was so afraid of doing anything that, that was not strength training that I only lifted. And I remember I had a, a trainer that worked for me who actually communicated this to me. And I thought, huh, I wonder if they're right. So I did 20 minutes on a stationary bike and was totally gassed out. And I said, maybe they are right. So I did a little bit of cardio, just, you know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, a few days a week. And I was able to do more squats and deadlifts and overhead presses because my overall fitness improved. So because of the cardiovascular adaptations, if it improves your VO2 max, doesn't take away from your ability to strength train. In other words, it's not the dominant force in your training and it contributes to your overall fitness, you can lift weights better. You can do strength training better. And as a result, you end up building more muscle. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. yeah I like it. Have you guys ever experienced that before? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you, great test. If you've never done uh, three sets of 20 barbell back squats with one minute rest in between and felt just absolutely gassed or trashed from that, um, that's kind of like my gauge. Can I do that? Like, yeah. can, I, can I go get under the bar and do 20 reps for like three sets of, of barbell back squats. And when I start getting to the point where it's not, I don't get muscle fatigue, I get like fatigue from cardiovascular. I just can't, I can't catch my breath. That's always my signal of like, okay, I need to get yeah. back to doing some traditional cardio to get yeah. back in. It. I like, um, personally, I like to do what would be, I guess, considered conditioning work, although that's a general term. And I like to do um, like sled work, mm -hmm. which I've talked about a lot on the show, but sled work does that for me. So if I do like long distances with the sled where I'm going, you know, 50 yards, 100 yards back and forth and I start to gas out like that does it for me or um, and I don't recommend this unless you're really, really good with stability and strength and all that stuff. I'll do a sled sprint. Uh, man, that makes a huge difference in my ability to lift weights. Uh, plus, it's somewhat anaerobic, right? So it's yeah. got some muscle building effects itself. I tend to lean a little bit more towards uh, focus on work capacity. So it'd be like sled work or moving with weights. So for instance, or, or I'm I'm doing farmer carries or I'm loaded uh, movement where I'm actually like trying to hold it for longer durations. Uh, and, and I found that that really does carry over very nicely to um, heavier weight training uh, because it, that that's always sort of a, a sticking point for me in terms of progress. It's like I'd get, I get to a point where I, I'm pretty attached to lower reps and mm -hmm. strength training in general, but then I, I hit a wall and it's really because I'm not, exerting the same amount of effort uh, towards the end. And, and, it, and I know it's because of fatigue or it's just because I'm not training uh, to, to have that kind of conditioning uh, to, to expand upon my workouts and make them a little bit longer. Yeah. Now, now to, to communicate to the non gym rat uh, what I would, what I recommend uh, and I used to tell us the clients was have fun on the weekend, you know, like that's when you go do your surfing or your biking or your rock climbing. And that, will complement your ability to train because it's it gives you some of that VO2 max improvement, some of that stamina, and it's not really a workout. And in, in my experience, my work capacity is better 
when I'm doing something I enjoy mm -hmm. versus something I don't. Like if I go hiking and it's intense and I'm with my wife or friends, I'm more likely to push myself and the enjoyment really, you know, takes away a lot of the pain or the struggle of it. So that's that's yeah. always what I recommend. That's one of the clients. biggest things I miss about just sports or like organized sports in general. It's just fun and you don't realize uh, the kind of effort you're exerting the whole time because you're just mm -hmm. – in it and and uh you know that's one of those things you find something like that that's just enjoyable it doesn't feel like work it's just something that uh you know promotes movement i think a, a big mistake though that's made when introducing cardio into your routine is not also modifying your weight training oh good point you know what happens like just adding it yeah like what happens is somebody hears like oh wow this could help me build more muscle or oh I, this will help me burn body fat and so then they add it on top of their current weightlifting routine and many times add too much of it because they think more is better. And then now they're doing cardio every single day and they're weight training, you know, say four or five times a week or more uh, on top of that. And I think if you're going to run a, okay, I'm going to really challenge myself cardiovascular, I'm going to start training hill sprints or I'm going to start to incorporate you know, something, whether it be sled drives or whatever it is to work, increase your work capacity. I'm also going to then pull back on some of the things that I'm doing in resistance training. So I'm just not throwing everything at the body all the time, because I think that's a mistake that people make because most people don't just want to get better at cardio or just want to burn fat. They want to have muscle, be lean, be firm, be yeah. quote unquote tone. You know, they want to have that look or that feel steel still while they also add in this cardio. But you have to understand that that you have to modify that. You should modify that also. Yeah, because if you're if you're very consistent with your training, you're probably training close to the line. Meaning you're 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 if you're smart, you're training with the optimum amount or trying to train with the optimal amount of intensity or volume which means if you throw anything more on top of that, now you're outside of optimal. So you have to offset, right? So so I said sled. Well, how do I do that? That's what I do on my leg day. So some leg days, I'm not squatting, I'm not lunging, I'm doing sled work. So it replaces all the other leg exercises with this you know, leg workout slash conditioning workout. So I'm not adding on top. I couldn't imagine doing sled on top of my tradition, my normal leg workout. That's what much. most people would do, though. Mm -hmm. and, no. and the the fear is that you're going to lose this muscle no. um, by taking off a day of squatting. You're, I mean, you're training like say maybe a three full body routine, and a great point. You have a day. Okay, you're supposed to do back loaded squats, but you're like, you know what? I want to work on some of my you know work capacity or you know stamina a little bit or cardiovascular endurance. Therefore, I'm going to, instead of doing squats today, I'm going to do the sled drive. Great idea. Great, I think, thing for people to include into their routine. Uh, problem is that's not what most people do. Most people would be like, oh, I need to do some cardio. And so then they slap it on top of mm -hmm. that routine at the end or whatever. And at that point, I don't know. I think you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. 100%. Hey, here's the giveaway. MAPS Cardio, the newest MAPS program designed to have you build stamina and endurance. Do cardio, but don't lose muscle. Do it the right way. Get the stamina, endurance, plus the strength and muscle that you want, written by your favorite personal trainer. So you can get it for free. Here's how you can do that. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to the newest MAPS program, MAPS Cardio. Now, everybody else... This is a new launch, so we have a promotion that ends July 3rd. So before that, here's what you get. The price goes from $117 for MAPS Cardio to $77. Plus, we include two free eBooks, the VO2 Max Boost eBook, teaching you how to improve your VO2 Max, and the book on nutrition called Eat for Performance. Both eBooks will be $47 after the launch period, but right now they're free for the set with the $77 price uh, launch price for MAPS Cardio. Okay, so if you're interested, go to mapscardio.com and then use the code Cardio Special for the discounted price and the two free ebooks. All right, here comes the show. Dude, I got to tell you guys something hilarious about uh, my youngest, right? My, what is he? He's almost 20 months now, 19 months, 20 months. Uh, I forget, you know, when kids are that young, they do things that are just absolutely hilarious, but it's common among young kids because mm -hmm. my other kids did something similar. So obviously he's still in diapers and when he has to poop, he hides, which a lot of kids do. Yeah, yeah. A lot of kids will, will run off. So he's got like this, this, I'm sure one day when he's older, he'll listen to this and be like, Ugh. 
but he, he, there's this area behind the kitchen table that he'll like walk to and he'll watch you while he goes back there. Cause he's trying to see if you're watching him and I know, Oh, he's going to go poop. So it's like, all right, let's ignore him, leave him alone or whatever. Yeah. Well, anyway, Jessica is right now she's on vacation with him and her mom and they're in this nice, you know, this resort and it's like a pool area or whatever. And he's got nowhere to hide. So he's got his diaper on and he's walking around and she's like, I know what he's doing. He's trying to find a place <laughs> to hide to poop. So what does he do instead? He sta- he's like, he, he, at some point he's like, I got nowhere to go. So he covered his eyes. <laughs> he, thinks, he thinks nobody could see Dude, him. That's so that. funny. It must be, it must be like an instinctual thing for them to do that because Max does the same. So Max has a same type of a routine. Um, I don't know if you guys ever noticed, I, I converted that, uh, under the stairs closet into like a playroom. Yeah. It's really big, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. playroom. And when he, he always, he always has that door open or he wants to bring you in and play with him unless he's pooping. If he poops, he'll go in there. And then if you go to follow him, no, 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 no. Yeah. He'll, he'll tell you no. Privacy. And then he'll close the door and then he'll go in there and he'll squat and he'll go, the he'll go poop. Right. And then you have to come on, Max, change the diaper, whatever. If he doesn't have that space, he lays down on the carpet. And he puts his, he puts his, <laughs> his head in the carpet. <laughs> Oh, and I know man. that's what he's doing. It's like he's hiding. It's like, dude, you're out in plain sight, yeah, no. but he's got nowhere to hide. So he just puts his face in the carpet and then puts his hands over this and then he poops. Yeah. So we had this discussion because uh, Jessica, I told Jessica, I'm like, this has got to be an evolutionary trait, right? And I think what it is, I, I, I looked it up a long time ago. I think I did. And what it is, is it makes a lot of sense, a lot of sense that we don't poop next to, right close to our tribe where we live because that's how disease spreads. So it must be this instinctual thing to walk away and go somewhere away from everybody so you don't, you know, spread disease. Or yeah. That's my... I Yeah, I have a story about ever. I was, like, hesitant to talk about it because I know he's going to hate me, like, down the road for it. But uh, it was so funny. Like, I have to. And uh, he'll forgive me. But uh, we, were, we were, like, <laughs> vacationing with my in-laws and then, um, you know, Courtney's brothers and sisters and all like all the cousins. Like we had this huge house and it was at like somewhere up near um, the apple farm, you know, on their way up to Truckee. Oh yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. So we, we went up there and, and um, decided to vacation and whatnot. And this is when Everett was little and uh, he had just got off diapers. And so he was still trying to figure out the whole thing. And he, he was the same way. Like he would, even when he was in diapers, he had like a corner of the house where he would just always, he would just like find his way over there and he'd look around and then he just uh, like, <laughs> Hey, what are you doing over there, buddy? He'd just look at you like, ah, nothing, <laughs> you know, dude, like he's like wincing the whole That's time. So hilarious. Yeah. And it was so obvious. Uh, but so we were at, we we're at this place with all the cousins and all the bathrooms were being taken and like, he came up to me, he's dad, I really gotta go. I'm like, Oh no, like, let's get you a, a bathroom. Oh, this one's checked. I was like, oh, you know, you somebody will be done in a minute. He's like, okay. And then he just like disappeared. And I was like, oh no, where'd he go? And then I think he asked one other adult. He's like, I need to find somewhere to go to the bathroom. Nothing was available. Takes off. Nobody hears or sees from him for like, you know, half an hour or so. I'm like, where'd, where'd ever go? And uh, so later on, we find out that um, he, because of desperation, he had to poop so bad he went in this like closet in one of the rooms and then like he pooped, he just like took it out and he pooped like a pile, like right in place. And then he put like this chair over it and all of these like, Toys oh. around it to like hide it and oh, cover God. it, and then one of the, and then one of the like, you know, the uh, cousin found it, and we're like, "What is this?" And they're like, "Whoa, is this poop in here?" It's like oh. poop. And so everybody, you know, <laughs> like, "Oh my God, poor guy," you know. I, I felt so bad for him, Just, but he he played it off like, "Oh, I'm cool." Yeah, he was like fine, but later on, you could tell he's like super embarrassed by of it. Of course, yeah, but of it was course. like, dude, he, you know. It, it sucked because it was like there was nothing available, but it was funny how he like arranged and said it so it was like we wouldn't know it was there. It's like we're gonna know it's there, dude. It's, gonna <laughs> yes, it's not. It's not yeah. hiding very well, bro. Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. If it makes him feel any better, I mean, I did that as a. I was in sixth grade. Bro. Whoa, dude. Because I'm a old for that. Yeah, I obviously. So I, <laughs> I so I used to walk home from school, and my mom didn't trust me with a house key because she said, "If what if you lose?" It's okay, but I got a little preface here. Sicilians are highly suspicious of everything, so she's like, "What if you drop the key? Someone finds it and then comes in our house." I'm like, "They're not gonna know it's our house. Whatever, fine. I'm not gonna have a key." So I would walk home 
from school. And in, in sixth grade, you, that's right around the age where you don't poop at school. Like, yeah, as I get older, I don't care anymore. But when you're like in elementary school, you're like, you do not go to the bathroom, not a number two at school. So I held it all day. Oh, man. I walk home. It's hot on top of it. So it's like heat plus walking. And I'm like, oh, yeah. God. And I'm like, if my if if my mom's not home, I'm going to be so – because she had this habit of she would come home 20, 30 minutes after I got home. So I have to wait in the backyard. Yeah. So I was like, she better be home. She better be home. I get home, bang on the door. No one's there. Ring the doorbell. No one's there. Oh, my God. I went in the backyard, tried to break in, couldn't break in. So – it's right there in the backyard. I just, yeah, I did. I pooped in the backyard. I used my dad. You got to do what you got to do. I went in, my da- in the garage, and my dad had like these, like the, you know, the kind of uh, paper towels, the rough ones that you use oh, for like grease and yeah, stuff. Like the blue ones? Yes. <laughs> That's what I had to use, dude. Some and some I, of that hey, orange, you know, know like chapped. sandpapery stuff. On oh, there. dude. Yeah. She, came, she comes home, and I'm standing. I'm like sitting at the front door like this. Just waiting for oh, her. She angry. comes home. She's like, "What's the matter?" Yeah, I had to poop in the backyard. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault, you know. <laughs> so if it just makes makes you feel better. I was I saw go. I was with uh, Justin and Courtney on Saturday, and I was telling them a story about the uh, Max. Right now, this is like a new thing. So for like the last I don't know, maybe year, uh, he'll follow me into the bathroom, right? And um, he's he he stands next to me. He watches me pee, right? So he's fascinated by dad yeah. has what he has. And I yeah. can stand at this toilet, so which I'm sure every dad has a familiar story like this. So that's not strange to me. Yeah. But just recently, he he now asked me to hold his hand while I do it. So, <laughs> so, so I'm in there. What? So I've allowed him to come in and and watch me pee because I oh, figure this is a, this the a, sacrifices we right? made. This is a learning experience. You can watch how I'm peeing Ooh. in the toilet, and I, I kind of yeah. walk him through what I'm doing, and then I flush it, and I tell him I shake, and I do all that stuff, right? And then lately, he's just like, hold hand. <laughs> he puts his hand up. So, like, uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know okay, where this uh, just started. It's like three times he's done this now the, in a row. And I was telling Justin, I'm like, I don't know what, what this you is. You shouldn't have done it. That was too late. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, no son, you never hold someone's hand while you pee. <laughs> Ever. Okay. You know, you make eye contact. What the hell's going yeah, on? Stare at the wall. Yeah, the kids yeah. are great, dude. Uh, the stuff the that they do. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, right now she's, uh, uh, she's telling me that he's just so like, he loves the ocean so much. So she's scared because... Obviously, he can't swim, so he just runs out there. So there's like pictures of her like grabbing him, and because her her mom's taking pictures of you know her grabbing him with the water coming up, and he's at this big old smile. You could tell Jessica's like, oh, Max yeah. is definitely timid. He's like, so the we just last week at the school, um, it could poor Katrina. Katrina, you know, so funny, he's such a mom. Like if I tell, I was telling the story, she gets all defensive. You know, our son, he's fine. He's just fine. And it's like I'm not saying he's not fine. Oh, we're I like, know, dude. That's moms, dude. Right? It's so funny. Like I can't have us. I can't tell a story like this without her getting defensive. Like I'm not saying something's wrong with him. I'm just saying that he's a little on the timid side yeah. I, just, I love my son but he's a little on the timid side he's not like rough and tumble jump off things yeah. cr- you see kid like my best friend's kid is uh a year older than him but back man before he was max's age he yeah. was aurelius is also careful oh also very careful max is super careful and the teachers were asking katrina if something traumatic happened to him uh on the swing set or something and she's like when it's time for the kids to all go play on the swing set and the jungle gym Max comes over and wants to hug the teachers and play the teachers and do colors and like all why all the other kids are doing that. Like he has no desire to go do that. And Katrina's like, no, not really. He's just not ever really been into the slide. And we, of course, we've taken him and done that stuff. And the last time he was on a slide, he did slide down and like came off and hit his butt. He cried a little bit, but it wasn't like traumatic. But he's yeah. just he's like super. He's cautious. a lover, dude. Yeah. Him and Aurelius both. Yeah, my son's the same way. Yeah, super lover. He, puzzles though. I mean, he's doing yeah. five year old puzzles yeah. right now, so he's all about stuff like and then that. You got Justin's kids, just like his youngest. Is just well, like, ever well, it is. Not, yeah. Ethan, Ethan was. You said it was Ethan like, was very cautious. Yeah, he would like go up to the stairs and be like, "Oh, whoa!" And then yeah. he'd like, you know. Get down really low and kind of slide down the yeah. stairs. I'm like, oh, okay, he's gonna be fine. You know, Everett just ah. yeah. Like some kids will just go. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, Max. We never put gates up for Max. There's no yeah. gates on our stairs, but that's because Max is really good. He'll go to the edge of it and then he'll Dude, he'll crawl well, down real. Aurelius slow. goes down backwards because I taught him that's how you go down the stairs. Yeah. So like he'll when he's ready to go down the stairs. Let's say the here's the landing right and the stairs are way over there. He gets on his hands and knees and starts getting backwards now. So he'll start like crawling backwards for like. 
15 feet before he gets to the stairs. I'm like, hey, bro, you can get way closer before you get down. <laughs> so it's funny to see him go like this. And he gets it yeah, all early. way early, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. It's because, um, so besides like going to Sanctuary, which was awesome, we had a great weekend there for kind of. Oh, yeah. It was just you and the getaway. wife, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which is hilarious because it's like Father's Day weekend. I'm like, I'm away from the kids. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, let's go. But Sunday, actually, so I grabbed the kids from my parents, and then we went on this hike, and then there's a spot down uh, called like Garden of Eden where, you know, it's it's become more popular over the years, but uh, it's a big swimming hole where the river and everything is, and it's a really cool place uh, that you hike down to, and you kind of go through the train tracks, and so we did this whole kind of adventure hike we get there and we're and so there's a place you can like jump off of the the rocks up there and like just just bomb in it's pretty crazy and so uh the, the kids were like exploring and doing their thing and all that and there's like you know there's some young people there some college kids and you know some thongage and whatever oh, like some, some stuff out there that uh you know i never saw when i was a kid uh but uh so i'm pretty sure and I know, actually, I am sure because I caught eyes with with both kids, and they both caught eyes with me. Uh, yeah, one of the girls' tops just came off. What? It was like, boo! Like oh, right, right in our face. Courtney didn't see it. I didn't even talk to her about it or anything. She it was like an now. understanding <laughs> with us, and I was like, "Do you see that?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Dad, you know? oh, man. and so I was like, wow, on Father's Day and everything, I was like, I couldn't ask for more. <laughs> so, it was just a great experience. I, I guess I was there for their first uh, uh, boobs. God was like, you know, yeah, Justin's been working hard. I'll yeah. just little break the snap. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I when I went to, I was 12 when I went to, uh, one time when I went to Italy. and Nude beach? Well, my cousins and my aunt are like, oh, we're going to go to this beach. But hey, you know, people. A lot of people are topless over there. Of course, I'm 12. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Well, nobody told me that the people that were topless yeah. in Sicily were all over 70. Yeah. You know that in <laughs> you ever high seen, you ever hey, seen? Hold on. You ever seen like ski, like 70-year-old bro, tanned, in, topless? I, like really tanned because they I'm, live in the I've sun? I've been unfortunate. In high yes. school, my buddies and I, for spring break, we were sophomores or juniors, drove all the way down to Southern California where there's a nude beach in hopes to see like great naked bodies like that no. was like our trip we drove all the way from <laughs> oakdale all the way down to like it's like an Just eight on the hope yeah, yeah on an yeah. eight hour drive we were spending the night at one of <laughs> one of the buddies sisters who went to college down there and the whole plan was eight like, hours yeah we're it? going to a nude beach down there it was so whack dude it's it was usually, awful not one attractive not one attractive person it's was middle-aged men pot belly dudes yeah, yeah with like not not like what stack I thought of buttons was be. you yeah, know situation i don't need to say that dude you just reminded me so you know what i tried i started Started watching and had to turn off. I had to turn it off. I can't watch it. It's called uh, the show's called Euphoria. Yeah, on HBO. It is the most disturbing thing. It's so disturbing. These are supposed to be high school kids, and the shit that they do in that. It just my dad instincts the whole time. I was starting to stress. Does it out. remind you of oh, kids? Man. Oh, bro. I never seen kids, but from what oh, I've heard. Oh, you never heard kids? Yeah, that was in our generation, right? That's, so that's that also, just, from movie. what I heard, very disturbing and yeah. similar right, from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, dude. My, it's like as I'm watching. Yeah, I young 15-year-olds having sex and doing drugs and all kinds of stuff oh, like that. Oh, and terrible shit. Yeah. It's not just sex and drugs. It's like these kids are self-destructive. Yeah, that's what the there's like, it's just a sexual assault. And I don't even want to go into it, but as Yikes. I'm watching, because there's nothing on TV. I don't have the kids, uh, my older kids this week, the baby's with Jessica, so I'm alone. So I'm like, I get to watch TV all day, which I haven't done in a long ass time. Nothing was on. So I'm like, everybody talks about this. I tried watching it once, didn't like it. Let me try again. I couldn't, I couldn't. I've watched second, like three episodes and that was it, dude. It was too much. My dad, like my dadness kicks in and I get depressed and angry. I oh, got yeah. one for both of you guys. You guys are going to love it. My sister, Cassie, told me to watch and I, I saw it pop up on Netflix. I bet you guys have seen it and you haven't watched it yet and you'll both love it is uh, God's Favorite Idiot. Oh, God's favorite idiot. wait What's a minute. That? That's with... Uh, it's so righteous gemstones like. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. I have seen that and you, I skip over it. Yeah, you'll like it. Really? I, I know. I didn't well, I didn't watch either. My sister's like, you have to watch wait, it. Wait, so. there's a comedian on there that's kind of well known, right? Yeah, it's the girl. Uh, heavy Amy set blonde, not Amy Schumer, the heavy set blonde girl. That's really funny. I can't think of her name right now. She's in all kinds of stuff, though. Oh, you know? Who oh, she, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she's English. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, God, I can't. Super remember funny, her name. right? She's, Is it good? It's really good. It's okay. totally right, right. Righteous gemstones, like 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, it, yeah, I'll it's watch that. it's got a it, I mean it's not like a serious show at all. It's like that. You have to go you don't go into it looking for like I heard this, the um, I heard the one with um Adam Sandler's good. Everybody keeps I've heard me. that too. Yeah. So I I was told it was amazing. I saw people in our forum say it was the best ever. Katrina watched it when I was gone and she's like, it was good. She's like, it wasn't She's like, you're not going to, because uh, someone in our forum was comparing it to like best basketball movie out there, mm. which means you're putting that above Hoosiers, White Men Can't Jump. There's a lot of other great basketball movies that are out there. And So the, what is he, like a sports agent in this movie? He's a coach, right? I don't I don't know this. I didn't watch it. looks it. like a coach. So I haven't seen it. Something. I haven't seen it. But I, I mean, I heard the same thing too, but I can speak for the God's Idiot. I've yeah. seen at least uh, three or four episodes of it already, and it's, okay. I mean, it's stupid funny. It's just, it's good. good. That's like, what I'm in the mood for. Yeah, yeah, you Euphoria gotta, messed me up, dude. I had nightmares last night. Yeah, no thanks. Dude. I had I nightmares last night. I don't like it. kids behaving badly uh, series. No, I'm not dude. Into that. Yeah. I already have a tough time anxiety. watching, I already have a tough time watching old movies that I used to identify with the kids when I was a kid. Now as a dad, I identify with the adults. Yeah. So the kids are like not listening to their parents. I'm like those fucking kids. What the hell's <laughs> going on here? You know. And I'm like, wait a minute. What do you? Uh, what do you guys think? Have you guys been paying attention to the the new forum, the uh, our wellness forum? Uh, yeah, Doctor Cabral. He had a talk in there just recently. It's doing really, really good. I don't yeah. know if you guys are paying attention. You know, so they they will recommend so that their company's Equilife, and they recommend their supplements. That's the name of the brand of their supplements, right? Yeah. But it's all targeted. So uh, I had somebody DM me, what's the difference? You know, this supplement company, that supplement company. There's such a big difference between generalized supplementation and targeted supplementation. It's like mm -hmm. night and day. Okay, yeah. there's no difference. So when you work with, with them, they test you, hair test. They could do uh, urine test, I think. They could do like a few different types of tests. Like they do with us, which right? already sets them apart from like every other supplement yes. company brand because it's like you know how do you even know what you're deficient in and properly supplement yourself if you don't do the testing? Well, we've been saying this forever. I mean, I and it wasn't that long ago I brought it up again on the show that you know before you go and spend money on a performance supplement like to build muscle, to burn body fat, or what like that like look and find out where you're potentially deficient in and get that balanced out mm -hmm. first. That'll pay you back so much more. Then even even something as great as creatine, which we all love and talk about as, as an amazing supplement, but if you're deficient in a bunch of other things and you're taking well, creatine thinking you're going to get all these gains from it. To you're give an example, out. in the episode we did with Dr. Cabral, he analyzed our hair test and he found that all of us had mercury, which is not good. You don't want mercury. So we all have a similar protocol for the mercury, which is, uh, bro I think it was broken cell chlorella and cilantro supplement. And why do you take those? Because they've been shown to bind with heavy metals and get them out of your system. Now, would those supplements be valuable otherwise? I don't know. I mean, maybe a little bit, maybe not. But if you have mercury or other heavy metals, it could be very valuable. And that's the value. The value is what are your issues? What do your hormones look like? What are your, you know, do you have d mineral deficiency? Like Adam, magnesium was a game changer for him. Yeah. But for me, not so much. Right. Because you were you were low on magnesium. I mean, if you look at what's going on in the forum right now in there, by the way, that's free access to our, our audience to go in there and and and, uh, and take what's up. What's the name all of that forum? Is it Mind Pump? MP Holistic Health. MP Holistic Health. The I mean, so many of the people in there, it's so great to see, like, because I mean, w I look at it and it reminds me of all the like difficult clients I had as a trainer. Oh. Like of all the years I've been training, like you know how you always like just desperate to find that. Key yeah, that's well, yeah, lock one at yeah, one at every fifth you got had like some condition that was like yeah, really rare yeah, that you were, or like, nothing worked that it worked. Yeah, yeah, and you're like yeah. just at calling all our friends. It is filled with that, like all these conditions that are popping up that I'm like, oh, I so above my pay grade on like how to help these people. It's so awesome to see them getting help from Cabr and Cabral's team's amazing because. Yeah. They're he's on top of it. He's in there. He's got multiple other assistants that are in there. They go on there and they do a weekly talk where he does a live Q and A. Like they're super organized. They're all about finding the root cause. Oh all yeah. About it. Hey, speaking of forums, okay. Did you guys see? You guys did because I sent it to you. We did a, a a live qua episode recently where a guy comes on, and he says, "Hey, my right arm is slightly oh, swollen." Yes. I'm glad you brought this up. It's slightly swollen oh, yeah. and it had a little bit of that pain. Had me concerned after we hung up. And man. he's like, I don't, you know, what mobility exercises and whatever. And thank God uh, we we pressed him to go to the ER. Um, I this, mean, you really did, bro. I, to be honest with you, when we did it, I was like, oh, you should go have that look by a doctor. And he was like, oh, I try to get into a doctor. It's really busy. It's going to be weeks out. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. we'll just make sure you do it. And you were like, uh, 
Yeah, go, go today. Go today <laughs> to the yeah, ER if go. you have to. Yeah, yeah so. no, I trained. So there were two doctors in particular that I, I that influenced me with this, is, and they were both vascular surgeons. And I remember specifically, there was a conversation we had about thoracic outlet syndrome where one of my doctor clients said, ooh, this could be something that's bad. And then the other client talked to me about um, asymmetrical swelling or fluid retention and how that could mean a clot, a blood clot, right. in which case you go get checked out immediately. And those conversations, I had so many conversations with Dr. I trained a lot of doctors at one point and I used to just ask them so many questions. In fact, I felt guilty like that I should be paying them to train them or whatever because I would ask them so much. But I, some of it stuck. So when he showed me that, and I don't want to scare the guy, right? I don't want to be like, you got a blood clot. And I don't know, right? So I said, well, but then at the end when he's like, let me, you know, I'll wait a few days because I got a busy. I'm like, no, go to the ER now. Anyway, thank God we did. So he went to the ER and I can't, I wrote down the syndrome that they, uh, that he has. It's called, um, uh, it wasn't the exact Paget same thing. Paget-Schoeter syndrome. Okay. So it's from, it's from thrombrosis. So it's essentially blood clots. Mm. So it's like thoracic outlet syndrome, except caused by blood clots. Mm. He's been put on blood thinners and he's going to go see a vascular surgeon. Thank God. Mm. Cause that could turn into something real, real bad, nasty. real yeah. fast. So yeah. I feel so happy that we did that. So he went in the forum and so crazy. You know, know. It's so crazy too, is just yeah. recently have we, did we start having Jerry ask people to, if you have a picture or whatever like that, we mm. weren't doing that before. Remember we, before we were yeah, just, we, yeah, I know we would need to visibly see yeah, that. Cause to, you know, if he would have described that, I would have been it. like, Oh, he's probably exaggerating. But when I saw the picture, I was like, Oh wow. That yeah. is like, yeah. Well, the swelling, super, the, super the swelling part is what set off all the red flags. Yeah. If he said, Oh, it kind of hurts. That also would make me like, if you have anything asymmetrical and you don't have like a difference between one side and the other, and you don't have like an injury that you remember. Mm -hmm. Even if you have an injury that you remember, you got to be careful. But when there's an asymmetry- Young, fit guy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Young, yeah. fit guy. So rare, super rare for that. Yes, yeah. So I was like, thank God he went because he found that out. And um, and what they'll do is they'll go, they'll put him on blood thinners and then they'll go in and li likely what they'll do, this is just based off of uh, talking to other people because I'm, I'm not a doctor. They go and they have to dissolve the clot get it out because if it gets loose, obviously it could cause problems or if it gets bad enough, obviously he could lose his arm. Yeah. You know, type of deal. So yeah, thank, serious stuff. Thank goodness. Uh, but I mean, this is a, a message to all trainers when it, it's outside of your scope, always refer out because what you don't want to do is be like, yeah, let's try this. Yeah. Let's try that. See yeah, what yeah. happens. And do then some it turns hand out. Crust rotation. You'll be fine. Ice it. Yeah, and no. it turns into something, you know, really not good. Well, that's whatever. what I'm, I love that holistic health forum right now is because that's what I'm looking at tons of of people asking questions that yeah, I wouldn't have the answers to them. And so having the Cabral's team in there answering questions is super cool. Yeah, totally. Super, super hey, cool. by the way, did you guys uh, hear about what happened? So we have an editor. His name is Gio. Did you guys hear what he did? No. Mm -hmm. So he took... He he he! Oh, he yeah, got a bottle hear. of Ned uh -huh. from the back. Yeah. So so Ned is hemp oil extract, right? And there's three different yeah. strengths. He got the fifteen hundred. They send the us strong one. They yeah. send us the strongest one because yeah. we use it, and you know that way you can use a little bit. So he got the strongest one. Yeah. And took a fat dose, like two like two fulls. fat drops. Yeah, like dropper full, fulls, right? Yeah. Which yeah. Is normally like a quarter is a dose or whatever. Oh, yeah. And it's got. I mean, it's got. It's very concentrated. Lots of cannabinoids. He's like, dude, I got, he goes, I think I got high. I'm like, what? He goes, I took it. And he goes, and I really, I'm like, how much did you take? And he told me, I'm like, oh yeah, dude, you took a ton. Yeah. But you know, this just goes to show you that their stuff is legit. Like I've taken other CBD products and it's like, you don't feel it. And you're like, is there anything in this? Like there's nothing in there. But he did that and he's like, Bro, yeah, that market. I gotten, felt that. That market's gotten so competitive. There's a lot of watered down stuff all totally. over the place. Or there's not regulated or anything. So they could literally say, Something's in there and there's nothing in there. It's full spectrum. It's not just, you know, derived from one thing, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, there's this whole host of cannabinoids yeah. uh, in there. For but him. he's like, bro, I got all euphoric. And yeah. I was like, oh my <laughs> yeah. God, this is amazing. He I'm like- Super calm. And I'm like, how much did you take? He yeah. told me, I'm like, oh bro, you took like four times Do you times use that or do you use the sleep uh, formula more? I use that more. I use the sleep formula if I really know I, that I take I'm that when I'm on the road. Which the, one? The sleep. Yeah. yeah. And that's what Doug uses I too, right? For the Doug, road. Doug swears by the sleep one too. Oh, it, you will yeah. sleep. Am I the only like hardcore mellow guy? I, I'm the mellow. I used to yeah. be. And then um, I realized because I'm a little bit different. I mean, we did that panel with Cabral. Yeah. Like, uh, honestly, like, and he was talking about like, you're going to wake up a little bit uh, more groggy 
uh, if, if you are, if you have adequate amounts. And so I had adequate amounts. And so then I stopped taking it and I wasn't as groggy in the morning, Oh, wow. but then I'll use it intermittently though. When I want to sleep really well, oh, so. Ned sleep, you will sleep. You'll yeah. sleep hard. Yeah. Like really. Hard. So my grandfather, I told you guys I gave him, but I didn't give him sleep. I gave him just the regular hemp oil and he loves it. Loves it. So I love, I love it. I, and I remember before, uh, I tried mellow. Um, it was like my go-to thing product that they had. But since my experience with the getting the my the right amount of magnesium, mm -hmm. like that has made such a big difference that I haven't hardly ever used to sleep unless I'm like try, until I'm, I'm like doing both. Mm -hmm. If I'm like really trying to come down from like super high, which has been a long time since we've done something where I'm like up all night. Yeah, um, especially if you have adrenaline all that yeah. during the day. Yeah, I have to like. Yeah, when we were doing like the live events yeah. and and stuff like that a lot, oh, yeah. I was using that a lot because it's we we would be going all the way till eleven or midnight. It's so hard for me to come down from one of those mm -hmm. and go to sleep after. Yeah, so the, the 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 hack with it is to use the sleep uh, about an hour and a half before you need to go to bed. Wait for it to kick in and then make you want to go to bed. Because if I take it and then go to bed, I still have to wait for it to kick in. Yeah, and I'm in there and then whatever. And I think it lasts so long that I can sometimes wake up groggy. But if I do it an hour and a half before, it's like the right time. So if you do that, okay, my my thing is I would caution because I've played with this enough times that if I do that and I watch TV or I get on my phone, it'll fuck my sleep up. Oh, if I take it- If one, you push past it? Yes. Oh, I see. It'll actually have like a reverse effect and now I'm like wide awake. So when I when I decide I'm taking mellow or the sleep, I have to commit that like okay, it's, this is my time to settle down. Mm -hmm. So I need to like no phone, no whatever, because I've done that in the past where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna fart around on my phone for another half hour before it kicks in, and then I'll go to bed. And just the blue light stimulant or mm -hmm. being watching TV kicks me back up again, and then I move past that like my body coming down, and then it doesn't. Well, you got to know yourself. That's, yeah, that's yeah. it. So that's a good. Yeah, that's no, a good point. it's definitely something that I've played with back and forth, and I I notice a big difference for sure. Yeah, Did Did you, you, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna talk to you guys about like some disturbing trend. I don't even think it's a trend. I just saw like somebody actually wearing this, and also like it was like kind of promoted on Instagram. But uh, I was like walking around. It, it wasn't in Monterey, but it was. I think it was somewhere uh, close by Marina, and this guy was walking around and his shirt was kind of tucked up a bit. And it was like, you guys have seen sort of the, the FUPA yeah. uh, where oh, yeah. you got like that, like that gut, the distended gut just kind of just hangs at the very bottom and you can see kind of like the, uh, you know, the belly button and the hair and whatnot. Oh. So that was there. It was very prevalent. That's a nice image. Thank right. You. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Well, it was a fanny pack. So oh, it was designed it was to look like that. That looked oh, like a, that's smart. And he just opened it, and he was like using his credit card, and everything to pay. And that's then, funny. I was like, I like this guy. It was. I was like, this is so gross, but like because it's a fanny pack, I'm like, oh, so I've seen it. Amazing. Smart. I've seen a T-shirt that looks like a dude. It's a T-shirt, but it, the print is a yes. guy with like a gross hairy. I've seen a girl wear a uh, a onesie swimsuit that was like a dude's fat body yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was so confused i saw somebody wear a mask like that so it's a mask <laughs> but it's a print of a face with yeah. like fucked up teeth and from far away you it looks like yeah. their face that's funny i love that kind uh, of stuff that, yeah that's a total hack hey did you guys hear about so are you guys familiar with fina f-i-n-a they're oh, the, you're talking about the transgender. They're no longer letting the, uh, the so it's this is in the women swimming, right? Yeah, so it's the I governing body for international swimming. Okay, and I think the new policy that they're passed is is more much more science based than the previous one. The previous one the policies were, I think, stupid. I've 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 talked about this where you transition, and so long as your testosterone is low, I think you transition a year, and then you can compete, which is so anti-science. You obviously still have these, these inherent biological advantages. Well, anyway, the new policy is if an athlete transitions after the age of 12, they cannot compete. So in other words, if you go through puberty yeah. mm -hmm. as a biological male, then sorry, some those results, you know, that the puberty effects, uh, you don't erase them all with hormone transition. Right. So this is their latest, their latest policy. Now here's my opinion. I, I still would say not at all, but I mean, I mean, still it's better than what it was before. Way better than what it was before. Mm -hmm. Now I'm with you because yeah, there's the, still, there's still the your, science. Your DNA is still, you know, your yeah, code. The, the science does show that there's some advantages that have nothing to do with the hormones that your just your DNA will tell your bones to be a little thicker, your muscles to be a little bit stronger. So I think eventually that's what we're going to figure out, but this is so much better 
than what they were doing before, where you had these guys, these these well, athletes it was just who egre- competed. It was as, just so egregious before. Yeah. Dude, come on, you had athletes that competed. The, the dude as was males. just yeah, he was just kicking ass and swimming in in, in the males league, and, and then, then they transition, and then they crush yeah. you know all the all, all the females, which wasn't fair, especially in college. I feel bad for some of these female athletes who worked their whole life and then just get obliterated by. You know, so where athletes. where is this now being international competition? International, so yeah. like all across. Yeah. Does, so does I, that make its way to like Olympic? Level? Olympics, I believe, is governed by another governing body. Okay. And their policy, we'll see if it changes. Because remember, they had the weightlifter. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm curious. Yeah. Because and I know I forget the name of the swimmer um, that had Leah done this. Thomas. Leah Thomas. Yeah. Right. So that was the big controversy. Which all look, all due respect, I, I definitely have empathy towards um, you know her and athletes like that, but. If you're going to have categories based off of gender, which which we did for a reason, then it's to keep things fair. So women yeah. can compete with women, men can compete with men. Um, there are inherent advantages, and they don't get a race completely with transition. So I think this is a much more fair, at least a step in yeah in that direction. That's good to see. That yeah, they're trying to definitely. at least like start trying to make an effort to handling. Do you it. guys you, think they're going to have a, a division that's transgender athletes? I think it's the only way you can, right? I think that's the most logical. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's the only way to make it the most most fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and uh, well, yeah, okay. If you transition uh, into a female, then it's going to be. I mean, into a male, then they can compete because it's going to be a total disadvantage that direction. Yeah. But the other direction is where the only the only advantage. So maybe you only have to do that one category, or are you going to say anybody who transitions either direction all fit in one category, yeah. or would you divide both those into two more categories? Oh boy, it's complicated, isn't it? Starts to get, but I don't think the answer. But I do think that the the it, it's also obje- it's objective as well. Complicated in the sense that how are we going to set this up? But not not complicated in the sense that is there an advantage? I think that was such a silly argument, and it really made me upset that people would say that. And, and then if you said no, there's an advantage, even if you change your hormones, they would try to silence you by by making you sound like you're a bigot or whatever, which is so not true. Uh, for for a lot, some people sure, but not for like for myself. Made me really annoyed. It's like, no, 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 don't gaslight me, dude. This is. Do you a, do you actually here. think this is the first sign of things starting to come back the other direction too? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, this is a big governing body. So and the, and it's a swimming governing body, and you know that this was in response to Leah Thomas. Yeah, that's why they did this. And the more of these athletes that compete, the more they're going to have to step up because you're going to start seeing, um, you know, records being crushed and and all that stuff. So yeah. and I do want to say like, this doesn't mean all men. Are stronger than women, and vi- or whatever. Well, this is different than too. I mean, this is high level at the at the at the ends of the spectrum. The strongest people are men. The fastest people are men. Not that all men are stronger. All men. There's def- there's women faster and stronger. Well, than you here's the thing is, I mean, you would have to then really revisit a lot of the performance enhancing drugs, performance enhancing supplements, like banned whatever, like whatever is going to give you an advantage. You'd have to like reevaluate that if you're going to allow. Uh, something that's a glaring advantage. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, like the sport itself has to be completely objective and not consider people's feelings as much in order to maintain, uh, you know, fair play for all. I yeah. think that just nobody, nobody thought this far ahead. I that's agree. What, that's what I think. I think nobody just thought I think this. the activism yeah. moved faster than the, yes. the governing bodies. Totally. And, yeah. I just think, I, I think, agree. I think it just happened so fast and, Totally. They they chose the path where they didn't want to get crucified online and just thought, okay, we'll just let them let them compete. And then they didn't think the ramifications all the way through. And we're seeing that now, and we have. And so I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see them, you know, change directions. I do too. We'll yeah. see what it's going to look like in ten years, 10, 15 years. If there's going to be a a separate division, we'll see. Look, so many individuals suffer from digestive issues because any protein your body doesn't break down creates digestive distress like gas, bloating, and constipation. Masszymes ensures that all the protein you consume breaks down into absorbable amino acids. This means better digestion, better muscle recovery, and even more muscle growth, faster metabolism. It's really great. And check this out. Right now, you can get a free bottle of Masszymes. Free, okay? And there's no continuity, meaning if you get the free bottle, they don't automatically bill you. It's just one free bottle. Try it out. That's how confident this company is in their product. I use mass signs with every meal, and I've noticed improvements in my digestion as well. So if you're interested, go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump free, and you'll automatically get a unique coupon code 
to get your free bottle. Go check it out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Teresa from Nebraska. Teresa, how can we help you? Hi, I just wanted to first say thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, I'm a new trainer. I've been training for um, a bit over a year, and uh, I found you guys about a month ago, and I've been binging every single episode. I really like can't get enough. So, Thank you. All right, a newbie. Sal's voice hasn't annoyed you yet? <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, wow. I'm her favorite host, oh, obviously. Wow. Wow. <laughs> anyway, continue. I love you all equally. Ah, good yeah. answer. Well, it's yeah. a nice <laughs> lie. Anyway, <laughs> Future politician. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Uh, so I'm just going to read my question. Um, I'm 33, about to turn 34, and I've been exercising since I was about 16. Um, I started with gymnastics, running, and doing some light machines. But for the past six years, I've been strength training, um, CrossFit, and powerlifting consistently, usually six days a week. Um, and I might run a few times per month, like five or six miles at a time. Um, I weigh 120 pounds. Um, it says in my email is 13% body fat, but I actually just got the in body scan today. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but 10.4% body fat today. Um, trying so hard for that six pack. I said my maintenance is around 2,600 calories um, and I'm cutting a bit. I'm actually in an ab challenge right now that through the month of June. So, um, and I'm trying for about 2000 to 2,100 calories um, and getting about 140 to 170 grams of protein per day. Um, I'm actually a full-time emergency room PA. Um, I work nights. Uh, and so lifting is like my second job. I'm in the gym for about two and a half hours every day and uh, less on Saturdays um, and just like four miles of walking or cardio uh, on Sundays. And I walk three miles or 45 minutes every single day. Um, I'm wondering where I go from here. Someone asked me last week, what are your goals? And it's kind of a hard thing to answer. Um, it's always been aesthetics, but how do I get that six pack? Um, I can't exactly change the amount of work stress I have, but is three and a half hours of activity per day too much? Um, should I cut the movement and the calories to kind of continue to um, excel? So um, yeah, thanks for your perspective and advice. I'm, yeah, glad, no I'm glad we finally got a girl on here who, okay, so I've been telling you guys forever about Katrina's body fat percentage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like yours. She she and by the way, her same thing that she's been challenged with forever is she hovers around ten to thirteen percent body fat the entire time we've been together, which is really low for a girl. But mm -hmm. in her eyes, she doesn't think she looks it because she's like, I can never see my abs. Like I've like yeah. one time dieted her down enough to where her abs have popped. The one thing that we we have not done that I would recommend to you. There's a couple things that we'll get to. I'm sure with the training volume, the amount of stuff you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, have you really focused on building strength in your abs and actually building your abs? I actually started uh, the No BS program just like two days ago. Okay. And oh, perfect. I, I was doing way too much of like low, uh, low intensity, higher volume. And so I realized, yeah, like cutting back the number of reps I'm doing and actually making like the form count is should be obvious to me, but it wasn't. So yeah. Yeah. So a couple of th couple things I want to comment on. It's it's no surprise that you're an emergency room PA with the type of workouts <laughs> that you know. do and how you've worked out in the past. So you're you're a bit of a cortisol junkie. Um, yeah. Your your workout volume is way too high. Uh, it's especially if you've been doing this for a long time. Backing off on the volume, you'll actually see your strength and muscle go up, and you should you'll actually see your. I don't think your metabolism is going to slow down. I think it'll it'll speed up. I think you're just doing way too much right now for your body, especially considering the type of job that you have. How is your hormonal health? Like your hair? How is your skin? Your, how's your skin? How's your menstrual cycle? Are you noticing energy highs and lows or temperature intolerances, cold, hot, that kind of stuff? Anything like that? Ring a bell? Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, I mean, hair and skin, I think are fine. Um, the temperature yeah, it gets me a little bit. It used to weigh more than it did before I actually put on muscle. So before I started strength training, I weighed like 90 pounds. So I'm up, you know, 30 plus pounds of muscle, which is really great. Um, and my menstrual cycle, yeah, I haven't had one in probably 10 years. So yeah. I'm actually seeing somebody for that right now. So you're, they, I, you're, you're, way over you're way overtrained. Are you now you competed in gymnastics? How, how high of a level did you get to? Uh, not that high. Yeah. I was more, um, just kind of doing more tumbling for cheerleading. So I was in cheerleading for like six years, pretty okay. competitively. Okay. And, and when you started lifting, you put on 30 pounds of muscle, even with that much volume, 
I, I, I would, I'm going to make a guess here that you actually are quite gifted genetically when it comes to athletics and strength and muscle and you're building muscle and strength in spite of the fact that you're training as much as you are. That kind of training right there would, would, would hurt most people. Just two hours, three hours in the gym every day, plus a high stress job, a high stress job, plus the running and the walking. I would scale you way back. I would do three full body workouts. Maps anabolic. And, yeah, maps anabolic. And your strength would skyrocket. You really, and you probably would get leaner, not because you'd lose body fat, but because you'd add lean body mass. So, um, and I would, and I would actually slowly reverse diet you, even though you're eating 2,600 calories. I would keep you at 2,600 while you're doing three full body workouts a week. And I would just walk in between. Mm -hmm. And then I would slowly bump that up. Don't be surprised if your hormones really start to balance out and you're, and you start working with your body. But it sounds like you're getting away with what you're doing because you have some pretty good genetics. But you don't you don't want to push that for too long. At some point, your body's gonna rebel. Yeah, so. I'm with Sal. Maps anabolic. You could still be doing the no BS six pack. You do it on the opposite mm -hmm. days. Yes. Um, and just and and since that's part of your goal, the ab thing. So I, I think you could mm -hmm. we could totally do both of this. I would increase calories. I would cut way back on all the other activity and just l let your body recover a little bit. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna be blown away by what happens. Teresa, how many people have told you that you work out too much? Be honest. I don't think I've ever met a person that hasn't said that to me. So. <laughs> okay, so so the, let me ask you, know, you know the mental part's going to be the hardest part, that's, right? That's why I said that. Yeah, like, but they're all full of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, yeah. be very honest with me. You can be totally honest. You won't hurt my feelings. Yeah. Are you going to take our advice, or is it one ear out the other? You know, I don't, I don't think it's one ear out the other. I think it will take a bit of time to like cut back, and so I don't think it's going to be like tomorrow. I'm just going to you know not work out. I think it's going to take some time to kind of cut back. But yeah, I mean, half of it, man, is like the job is so stressful. So it's just kind of like the movement and the, it's almost not like a meditation, but definitely in the form of like stress relief. Of well, course. It's the cortisol about. that you're getting. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening. You're, you're just, yep. you're getting a cortisol dump and it feels good. So that's what he, I mean, that's what we mean by cortisol junkies is you're getting that dump and it feels good. So it feels like it's right. It's like you go do it and it's like, oh, yeah. that feels good. This must be right. But it's not. It's what's, <laughs> it's, it's part of what's going on with your menstrual cycle. That'll yeah. come back when you start to back off a lot of this stuff. That'll be one of the first I'll, things I'm sure. Can we keep you, you do. busy doing like restorative movement, mobility, like some kind of like yoga, uh, there you some go. kind of practice yeah. where you're actively uh, doing something because it, uh, to me, I know that, uh, you know, this is going to be impossible for you to just stop completely. Right. So that's, I mean, yeah. Just start planning these things ahead of time. Go for like real low intensity walks, like barely anything. Get outside, do fill space with movement, but make sure it's restorative focused. Pick yeah. up, pick up knitting. No, that's that's yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. I started two years ago <laughs> <laughs> for that reason. So that oh, I would that have to like sit still. Uh, and then I'm like, I think I can probably still walk on the treadmill while I'm. <laughs> oh God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teresa, you would we, try and figure that out. <laughs> can we, what about this? Can we try this? Let's say you do three full body workouts and in yeah. between just do mobility work, go to the gym, do mobility work. That way you're still there. But right. it's like Justin said, more more restorative. Do you think you could do that? Like let's 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 take yeah. a first step here. Let's sit, let's solidify a first step. But it's gotta be realistic. I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear. I want something right. that's realistic for you. So what do you think is a first step that we can move? Like what can we do next? Next starting next week. Where where can we start? Oh, gosh. Um yeah. Did you say four or three full body three. workouts? I said three. Six or eight. Was it <laughs> Did you want me to still do nine or I'm confused? I mean I, I, uh, Can you do can you do three and then do mobility in between? Or do you want to start like let's start somewhere? Where can we pull back? Yeah. Yeah, three. I mean, right now I'm doing six, so like three seems like so low, but I guess I could try it and then. Well, you're still yeah. going. You're still going to the gym six days though, so let's go to the gym. Let's go to the gym still six days, and I'm even okay with this as my compromise because it sounds like that's even pulling teeth with you. I would go three days of the foundational work on anabolic on the off days. Go ahead and do the no BS since we want to build those abs. That's a, and that's mm -hmm. something that you want to do on those other three days and mobility work. So you're still at the gym for six hours a week. So you still get to go there, okay, and get your hour inside the gym. Just three of it is lifting heavy and training, you know, full full body type routine. The other three is ab work and doing mobility work. I feel like that's a pretty good compromise. Can we do that? All right, I'm into it. Yeah. Okay. And it'll move you forward further than what you're doing right now. And, and let's bump our calories a little bit too. Yeah, let's start eating a little bit more, see what happens. I, I bet you're going to feel amazing. It, if you can get past the mental part, You'll be blown away by how you're. I've I've worked with a lot of people like you, by the way, 
And when they, when they, when we got them to scale back effectively, it was like their bodies just responded and it was incredible. Really, really blow. It'll blow your mind. I promise you. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. She's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to do it. it. She's, yeah. She's like, I, hey, look, that. Hey, I've worked Well, that's with- why I was like, I'm, I'm going to give her a little more because I saw that look on her face. I know. Wait, dude. you're saying only three times? I've worked with a lot of people like that. Uh, and you know what sucks is that they end up getting to the point where they have to. You know, bro, where it's like shit shuts down. Uh, I and they're for- I mean, emergency. Look, first of all, I've trained a lot of people that work in the emergency room. It attracts mm-hmm. a certain type of person. 100%. And they love that. So like, it's the in, adrenaline red line. line. Yeah. In my experience, the reason why that is, is because there is nothing you can say to them that is going to get you to, to convince them that it doesn't feel good. I know. It feels good. Mm hmm. You, like we're sitting here telling her like, oh, your body wants you to not do all that stuff. And she's like, fuck you. When I do it, it's yeah. the best I feel. Right. Because she gets that dump. Right. So it's so hard to overcome that because you could sit here and we could drop all the science and explain all this stuff I to know. her. And she's just like, in her head, she's going like, um, no, I feel so you know what I used to, You know that. what? I had a client like this once yeah. and it was so hard. So you know what I ended up doing? It was one of the very few clients I actually trained five days a week. Because I knew when she was with me mm-hmm. that she would do the right stuff. And so with me, we did mobility. Did we did same. slow exercise. And then once her body kicked in and things started working out, then the light bulb came on. She said, okay, this is really working. But she's she's getting away with it right now. Doesn't realize the direction she's going. She hasn't had her period for 10 years. That's a, that's a really, really loud yeah. sign right there. Yeah. Our next caller is Caitlin from Australia. Caitlin, how's it going? How can we help you? It's going good. How are you guys? Good, good. Yeah, we're good. Um, so my question is what advice you might have for someone who's looking to maintain their fitness during an extended period of travel. Um, this year I'm traveling for a fellowship on a tight budget. So I'll be staying in hostels and won't have regular access to a gym or kitchen. Um, I'm proud of the strength I've gained over the past year of consistent lifting and wonder what I can do to maintain the strength or continue to improve over the next year? Yeah, uh, good question. You know, mm-hmm. Caitlin, um, what, in order to maintain strength, you, you actually need much less volume and training than you needed to gain the strength in the first place. So that's the good news, right? So you don't have to keep training the way that you're training to maintain most of what you got. Now, you probably won't progress a ton, but you'll definitely be able to maintain quite a bit. My, I've trained people in situations like this in the past, and the, and the most success I've had is by having them do 15 to 25 minute workouts every day. So mm-hmm. every day they would start out their their day with a 15 or 20 minute or 25 minute workout, usually body weight or band Bands or, or suspension trainer, trainer focused. And they would do three exercises and they would pick three on one day, they would do another three on another day and they would kind of go through uh you know a, like like a, a full week think of it this way, 7 days a week of 20 minutes. I mean that's a significant amount of exercise. It's just broken up on a daily basis. And it's a great way to start the day. And again, you don't need a lot of equipment to do it. You can do body weight bands and suspension trainers. Yeah, you seem to keep sending that signal to the muscles and keep stimulating them for the most part to maintain. So once you put the work in, I mean, going into your trip is probably a good idea to to really put in some good work. Uh, so that way it'll carry you a little bit further. But in terms of like maintaining it, you don't really need a lot. You just need a little bit continuously. So if you keep that in mind and you're able to travel with just a light amount of rubber bands, that's like literally all you need. You can do that in body weight. Uh, no problem anywhere. I see you're going to five different countries. How how long is the trip from when to when? Uh, it's a year. Oh, shit. It's a year? Well, no, we're talking <laughs> yeah. about a different timeline here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a hell of a vacation. Yeah. It's wow. work. It's not vacation. It's work. It's doing work. Uh, maps anywhere. If you don't have maps anywhere, we'll send it over to you. Yeah. Uh, most okay. of that, that's all body weight and bands. And that's what I would keep you on to sustain that for the you year. Know, because now, are gonna- you targeting gyms or anything in your travels? Are you looking that up to see like how often you might be able to have access to like an actual gym? I haven't. And I think that might be more of a budget constraint. But come to think of it, um, I feel like a lot of gyms offer first free promo. So that might be something I could look into. Yeah, I'm, keep a, I'm, signing a, up. I'm gonna tell you a secret that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna piss off every gym owner. Okay, it's what you do. You walk in <laughs> and you say, Hey, I just moved to the area. I'd like to try your gym out for the next week to see if I want to sign up and you'll get a free pass for a week. I know all the gym managers right now are really angry with me. It's their job <laughs> to try to close it. So that's <laughs> yeah. up to them. But I, usually you'll get about a week. But uh, no honestly what I want to do too is this because you're gonna be gone for a whole year. 
We'll give you maps anywhere, and then we'll give you map suspension as well. At least you have two different programs you can alternate through. And map suspension uses suspension trainers, which are super convenient as well. You can use those almost uh, anywhere. You could take from some of map symmetry and do some isometric work in there too. So there's, you could play with that a little bit. Um, but I think maps anywhere would probably be the the, the ultimate program to follow while you're there. Yeah. So if we're talking about financial constraint, that's going to need the, the the least amount, right? If you just have a couple bands and you don't even need that, you could do body all body weight if you had to. But bands and body weight, and that's the whole program. So you should be fine to follow that. Yeah, and the, and the cool thing with the 15, 20 minute daily work workouts is you could scale the intensity and you could just make them more challenging. So you don't necessarily have to add time. You just make them harder by slowing the reps down or adding more resistance, uh, changing the angle of the suspension trainer, for example. So, But anywhere in, in map suspension, both of them, great options. You'll be able to alternate between either one of them. And that'll give you a good full year uh, worth of training. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for calling right. in. Thank you. you Take care, it. guys. Bye. She, I actually, said, she said she's, it's, yeah, I, th I thought vacation. Where did you get work? Where no, it's because I looked, I'm reading her question. Oh, I was like, yeah. how did you know that was uh, work? I, yeah, know, no, this I is, didn't realize it was a year. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, a long is, time. it's a long time. Um, what is it? What is she doing for a whole year? Oh. It says she'll be visiting uh, five or more countries and it's healthcare. She's working through with families. Oh, it was like some kind of sabbatical or something. Yeah, emotionally through complex health challenges. So interesting. Yeah. So it sounds like a very purpose driven job. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, nonetheless, look, if you did, 20 minutes, seven days a week, right? That's a 140 minutes a, a week of exercise. And for, for most people, especially if you program it right, that's a decent amount. You're going to get good strength training. And then if you just stay active during the day uh, normally and don't eat like too crazy, you're going to be okay. You'll that's the, right. One of the positive things about traveling, for the most part, depending on where you're going, but for the most part, you end up moving a lot. At least I do when we go somewhere. Like yeah. Just everything from the airports to the walking around the, the new city. Activity is always up. Yeah, so as long as you, you, you stay pretty active and then you know do your little 20-minute workout a day, she'll be pretty good, man. Our next caller is Keith from California. Hey, Keith, what's up, man? Nice to finally meet hey. you. What are you doing? We're not answering any hey of these guys. questions. He's too fit. So, <laughs> I don't know if you saw him. You probably saw my metal letter. but So, basically, I've had uh, the RGB bundle since it was released in 2016. And, you know, I've gone through it maybe five, six times. And my question really is I've done performance. It's not my favorite, but I do it just because it's there. Um, and I did it this last time and I noticed a big strength increase, which I've never really noticed before. So I was just curious why that might be, um, you know, it's like a 10 to 20 pound increase from anabolic phase one to aesthetic phase one. So I was just curious why that might have happened. My guess would be because you are for the audience, you're a very, very experienced, consistent lifter. And you just gave us all some insight that it's not something that you would normally do. A lot of lifts inside performance are unconventional and different. Aesthetic and anabolic are pretty traditional as far as their movements. And so a lot of that was probably very familiar. And I don't know if this is like your second time doing performance or not, but maybe this time around you, you got after it after movements that you probably don't train very often. And that's the novelty, especially for somebody like you. Uh, who's been training as long as you have. I mean, this is what I see whenever I do. That's why I loved, like, for example, Map Strong when we first wrote that. That program was so unique to how I trained that some of the best gains uh, in, in both strength and my body that I saw was going through that, even though it's not my style of how I would like to lift normally. Uh, but for guys like us that have been doing it consistent for such a long time, it speaks to that novelty and why that's so important. Especially if it was so new going into it the first time. And if you're running it again, uh, your body being able to now recognize those movements and uh, being a little more proficient in those movements, uh, being able to add weight to those now and load it. Uh, that makes a lot of sense that uh, you would see a lot of progress in that direction. If, if you know, the other ones you were typically more uh, uh, inclined to do with, with anabolic and with aesthetic. Yeah. I mean, th there could be a lot of different reasons for this, right? could be your diet was different. You got more sleep, but it's likely that the movements and the programming and performance is exactly what your body needed. Mm -hmm. And that's why you saw those strength gains. Uh, it was just something that you needed and it the way it's written in the exercises that are in there is for again like to Adam's point you you train a particular way probably uh more often than not and so you introduce something that's that's different and just had happened to be the right program for your body and I've experienced that myself so 
Yeah, because like when I've done it in the past, you know, I kind of half-heartedly did it. This time I was a little more focused, as I, I guess, um, you know, because it wasn't as, I don't know, I was dreading it the last two times I've did it, done it. And this time it wasn't so bad for whatever reason. Yeah, well, it works, man. It I mean, that's works. good. Yeah, it did work. It helped with the, a lot. You know, my hips feel better. Uh, my uh, thoracic area is better. Uh, still working on my overhead a mobility is that injury I had years ago. Uh, but you know, uh, what do you expect from my age and all? Well, I, I, I think you're doing great and you look great. And, and that would be my guess is, is, yeah, yeah. is that you, and, and I think all of us, everybody in this room is guilty of gravitating to a similar way of training because it's mm -hmm. what we all enjoy. And I think there's, there's, there is some, there's some value to that, right? Cause it's what keeps us consistent. We train the way we like to train. That's what keeps me coming yep. to the gym. But every now and the every now and then, I know how important it is that I interrupt that. I interrupt maps aesthetic. I interrupt those programs that I like to go back to all the time with something like I don't like performance either. So I, I totally identify with you. So those are not <laughs> that's not my style at all. Yeah, um, yeah. And I and I and I and I do it begrudgingly. But I also know that how important it is, especially as I age you, and as long know, as I've been. You looking. know what the irony is? If there was a, a maps program that someone could do indefinitely. <laughs> and never have to switch out. It'd be mass performance. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the most complete in that sense. Uh, so everybody likes the bodybuilding stuff, but um, if 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 you don't do that kind of a Not workout, everybody, you're going to build <laughs> muscle and you're going to get stronger. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, Justin raises his yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah, that's my best guess, Keith. I think I think. Yeah, that's what, you know that's kind of what I thought, but you know I was just curious, and I was just surprised that I I submitted the question, and four days later here I am. So <laughs> I was just yeah, surprised. I shocked that well, i selected that quick well it's good to talk to you i know we see you in the forum all the time so thanks for calling in man hey sure thanks you got it right, on, right on oh boy the the answers that you want are usually in the place you don't want to look right so it's like the, that's isn't, like isn't that the case always the case yeah. i mean all you know like you see you hit the nail on the head adam yeah. it's it's super common for all of us to do that yeah but he's like, why did I get stronger? It's because it's stuff that you need. Well, to do. I say that because too, I like. I mean, I'm on the other end of that spectrum. Like, I don't like doing all of the um, super setting and, and the hypertrophy work. Like that to me is, I begrudgingly do it. Yeah. Uh, but I know that I have to check my ego out, and I have to seek what I know my body will benefit from the most. And that's a hard thing to do mentally, but it's the best thing you can do. Listen, I've, I've been training for a long time, and I've trained a lot of coaches and trainers underneath me, and I have yet. To meet one, okay, that doesn't do this. We all do. It's just natural. Yeah. You're, you're Nobody nat loves all training equally. Yeah, and you know? and, and and does it with you the like to do what you're good at, and does it with the perfect balance. Who do you know trains unconventionally, mobility focused, flexibility focused, strength focused, explosive focused? Like nobody. I I have yet to meet a person who is perfectly balanced and all that. We all tend to gravitate towards modalities that we love and enjoy, which I and which I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell someone don't do that because if that's what keeps you consistent, I think there's some value to that too. But it's also becoming aware of your habits and then understanding which types of modalities and their detriments. Yes. And, you know, and I can totally identify with him because he's, he gravitates towards the stuff I love, anabolic and split and aesthetic, all the bodybuilder type focus stuff. He's very much so into keeping a great physique. He looks phenomenal. What I neglect is multi-planar movements, unconventional training, you know, all the performance you know, if type somebody, stuff. If somebody went through every MAPS program one after another, they would achieve that balance. In fact, that'd be a good MAPS challenge. Is If you have every program, start with one and run through every single one and see where you're at at the end of it. I bet you'd be, your results would be Yeah, I'd love to see that end result. Our next caller is Nick from Nebraska. Nick, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. Um, Chilling. Good. Awesome. Hey, I've been listening to your uh, podcast for a month now. It's uh, sorry I'm not a lifelong listener, but I, I am now. So um, uh, I had a couple questions for you guys. The first one is I've been in the military for 14 years now. And I when I first started out, there wasn't really much direction as far as like how you are supposed to wear a rucksack and all this stuff. And so I got off active duty seven years ago and now I'm doing a, um, just a backstory. I got sober six years ago and each year I do a kind of an annual 17 mile ruck march. And, um, 
ultimately get some people together. Well, this year I decided to do a 50 miler. And so in August, I'm doing that. And my question to you guys is after I listened to your uh, podcast talking about like weight belts and all that, if you under, I don't know if you guys have ever wore a rucksack or anything like that, but um, there's a, a waistband or a belly band that kind of goes around it. And one of the things that I <clears throat> was thinking of the longer that I've been lifting and everything else is like, that can't be too good to keep your core tight like that for such a long extended period of time, especially now that I'm looking at doing it for like 22 hours or so. Um, and I was just kind of wanted to get some insight on maybe like a good approach for, for myself as to what I should do during that 22 hours. Should I go loose with that? Because I, what I was trained to do is keep the pack as tight and close to your body as possible. So you move as a single unit. Um, whereas if I loosen it up, then it puts more strain at other places, but also I don't want to fatigue my core to where I can't keep myself upright. Um, so my, that's ultimately my question to see if you guys had anything, any advice on what I should do with that. Yeah, no, listen to your training. Um, so what you're doing is a, is a, like an extreme physical exertion. Um, and the people who train you to do that, uh, they know what they're talking about. So when we talk about weight belts, totally different. Uh, but if I was training for a powerlifting competition, I would train with a weight belt. So what you're trying to do is get good at walking or, or rucking for long distance with this sack on your back, then you definitely mm -hmm. want to carry it close to your body. So, yep. I mean, you, if you want to train without it or train with it being loose, that's, I mean, I guess that's okay, but you should probably get good at using it the way that is best to use it. So I would listen to your training and I would, I would definitely, you know, um, keep it close to your body. Yeah. Do you bring it into the gym too? Do you lift with it on too? So once the pandemic hit, I threw like $10,000 into my garage. So I work out at home, cool. but I've got, um, I've got a treadmill that I walk on whenever, obviously it's inclement weather. And so, yeah, I, whenever I'm on the road for work, i I take it with me and I get on and I, you wear it in the gym. I try to wear it everywhere I go. If I'm going on a long walk or anything like that. So whenever I see guys in the gym wearing weight vests or wearing these backpacks and they're uh, uh, and they and they're not like a military guy, I always think it's silly. But for you, it makes total sense. Yeah, you want to get good you're at the, it. You're the guy who's supposed to do that. You're the guy in the gym who is supposed to have the rucksack on when you're doing all this stuff because you're training for that. You're going to be using that. You're going to have to go for 50 miles with it on your back. So I would strap it up tight and I would train on it and use it and, and get used to it being on your back as much as possible. Yeah, because the other way is just ineffective at that point, right? If you want to loosen it up and then tighten it back up and it's a different recruitment pattern. So you might as well master like the recruitment pattern of keeping all the weight and loaded the same way for that long extended amount of time. Um, but I mean, in terms of like bolstering up your, your core and like working on core work in the gym and all that, that would be a good supplemental option. Yeah. And, 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 you know, keep this in mind too, like, um, you're using your core quite a bit, even though you're strapping that to your, your body, it's just a different recruitment pattern. You're essentially getting good at traveling for distance with the ruck pack on your body. So you want to train mm -hmm. the way that you're going to, you're going to go do this competition. You want to train that way, so um, yeah. And I, I'm, you know, it's a good question because I can see how it could be confusing, yeah. Based on what we yep. said with with the weight belt, but your your goal with this is to get good at at doing this. It's not necessarily to you know just have function throughout the day and stuff like that. Although I would say you're probably perfectly fine considering all the other exercise and stuff that you yeah. do. You said you invested in a, in a in a home gym. I'm assuming you mm -hmm. do a lot more than just you know rucking. So no, I, I would listen to your training. And your trainers and wear it the most efficient way possible. If you lose efficiency, it's going to make it much more challenging. That's the thing. Yeah. You don't want to add that to the mix because now, you know, you're going to be setting yourself back uh, in terms of like being comp competitive out there with everybody else. Yeah. So to give you an example, it'd be like, um, you know, if I walked barefoot, I, I could develop better natural foot recruitment patterns. But if I'm walking for distance, if I know in a month I got to go walk for long distance, I'd be stupid to train barefoot and then put my shoes on. Unless I'm going to do the whole thing barefoot, I'm going to train the way that I'm going to compete. And in this case, it's going to be, you know, with the with the sack on your back, so uh put it on the way you were trained. Yeah, for sure. And I you know, that's one of those things too, I guess. <clears throat> Being in the army, we understand, but there's it's more hearsay of like, hey, do it this way rather than like anybody that really knows. 
And so I just thought that <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, maybe there was some secret out there that was, uh, but totally. Then then my training has been good, and what I've been told is the right yeah. thing. Well, if, so, you, if you were if you came to me and said, Adam, I want to train my core, and we weren't, and you were not going to go on a fifty mile ruck with a backpack on your back, right? I then I would say mm -hmm. let's not use that. Like I would train your core without the backpack and with, but the fact that you were going to go do an event like that. I would absolutely want you to use that way. So yeah. I don't think it's the, and to Sal's point, it's, it's, it, you're not going to have a weak core. You're just, you're training a different recruitment pattern. One that is used to having a strap around your waist. But since you were going to go for a 50 mile run with a strap around your waist, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. If you were not going to go on that and you're like, Hey, I just want to have a strong core. Uh, what do you think about training this with his backpack on? I'd say, well, if you just want a strong core, uh, I wouldn't want you to train with a backpack on because I don't think it's superior for training your core because you're not going to go do a competition. Does that make sense? You know, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And don't, don't discredit, uh, don't discredit the, the anecdotes you're getting from the people training you because that's a lot of anecdote. So what you're, what you're going, what you're going for, I mean, how long have people done these long rucks in the army? Like how many years, oh, how many decades? Yeah. So hundreds so, of years. Yeah, So it's, <laughs> so it's yeah. good advice. Yeah. It's good advice. <laughs> so we might not have studies yeah. you know, to support it, but yeah, uh, you don't want to learn the hard way and be like, you know what? You guys don't know what you're talking about. Have any well, of the guys like switched it up and put, you know, the load in the front, uh, for part of the time as well. Only when we're going on deployments and getting on a plane, okay. gotcha. <laughs> that's, that's the only time we switch it up. Cause it, it, it doesn't sit right. If you put it in the front, yeah, it just so. doesn't work like that. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Got it. I think, uh, I think the big question too is, uh, I I'm probably, similar to you guys, as far as like, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not probably going to talk about it. And so I'm a master fitness trainer for the army now. And one of the big things was like, whenever we're going on rucks on drill weekends or whatever the case may be, and people are asking me and I'm like, well, sh well, I can't, I can't tell you that because I don't physically know, you know, and I don't know the facts. So I'm just going off of what some old uh, grunt told me like 20 years ago. So um, I respect that. So totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, totally. That's what, uh, but my, uh, second question is I'm a musician and I'll go on stage and play three hours at a time, uh, three hour shows. And I'll have probably like a 15 minute break or so, um, at the top of every hour. And what I'm finding right now is that I'm great. Like I'm on a very like regimented diet. I have six to seven meals a day and everything is just kind of mapped out for me. But then whenever I hit show days, I'm up later and I have my time slots in order to eat aren't the same. And so it gets kind of mixed up. And my question to you guys is for those times, whenever I'm on stage and I hit a, I hit a wall and I just cannot continue performing because I'm super tired um, and really like, just to give you a kind of, uh, idea, like I'm on stage and I have a whoop band and I burn probably at least according to that, like 2000 calories in a night. It's, it's a ridiculous amount of calories, obviously within probably reason of that. But, um, so my question is, do you guys have any, like, just advice on what I should be eating during those times? And and how often I should be eating yeah. while on stage you play or the accordion any or what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> What's your instrument? What's your What's instrument? A, uh, I'm a, I play country music, so I'm a singer and oh, nice. uh, guitar player. Oh, good deal. I, you know, okay. So front element, element T, bro. I, yeah. I would front load. So I would, I would make sure that you go into it well fed. And then the studies show a carbohydrate drink, very, very easy digesting drink. That's got carbohydrates and some sodium. So you could put like element T, in a big, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but it's a company we work with in a big, um, you know, canteen. And then you could do like half water, half Gatorade even. I mean, just some carbohydrates and sugar with some salt, and that'll replenish you enough to continue doing. That's what the studies actually show that when, when you're doing prolonged activity, that's when those uh -huh. intra workout carbohydrates actually make a difference. If you're just working out for an hour, you know, you're doing strength training, won't really make that big of a difference. But when it goes on to two hours, three hours, that's when those carbohydrate, those quick digesting carbohydrate drinks with some salt actually make a big difference. So that's all you would do. You just drink that on stage as you're performing. Okay. Yeah. Because like you just trying to eat and stuff like that while I'm performing, 
actually is is uh kind of counterproductive for me because then i have feel like i have stuff in my throat and i can't sing as well Mm -hmm. um and so definitely uh, drink wise that would be the way to go for me totally totally yep yep, some carbohydrates and some salt and you just drink that as you continue and you should you should find yourself not crashing yeah i would do the i would do like you said i would load up on the food ahead of time so you have a good amount going into your first part because you get a break every hour you said right so I would go. Yeah, I would yeah. go. I would make sure I'm well fed going into the to the concert, and then while you're on stage, I'd actually have that w- canteen with water and element tea in it. So I'm kind of like sipping on like, between you know songs or whatever that you kind of be sipping on water. Well, hopefully you could do uh-huh. that during that time. Yeah. And then at your hour breaks, I would be replenishing with the sugar carbohydrate yeah. drink. That's what I would do. Awesome. Yep. Hey, and next next time you guys have uh, family get-togethers at your house, I'll come out and play. All right, oh, yeah. that's all right, nice. that's all right. right. Call you out on that, just, dude. <laughs> yeah, look how we do it. Justin just did it. Justin just had a band yeah. going to his house live. I did, man. Yeah, so I got a good I, venue I, I for you. I remember you. he was talking about that. Yeah, yeah. and right. a leaf blower. Hey, man, if you're gonna buy a leaf blower, <laughs> buy Milwaukee. If you're gonna buy one, <laughs> oh, that's I love Milwaukee, bat- dude. Yeah. Battery yeah. operated, <laughs> and you need the battery to last. Yeah, so oh, cool, day. guys. Right well, on, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, and thanks for your service, Nick. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, this is where intro workout carbohydrates make sense. Yeah, they sell them to, to people who lift weights, and it's like, yeah, it's not, I mean, you're working out for an hour. Unless you're going like ridiculous crazy, it's not really going to make that big of a difference. But when you're going on for two hours, three hours, yeah. that's when you see the studies actually show. And I've done it before. I've done really long, prolonged workouts. That's when it makes a difference. Oh, yeah, and you bonk. I mean, being a, it, it's pretty rigorous, like doing stuff like that on stage and the pressure and everything else. So, yeah, to maintain that kind of energy is is definitely something you want to consider having that available readily. Yeah, yeah. I love the idea of loading up the calories, having the LMNT to sip on while he's on stage, yeah. and then hit every at the hour because he's getting a break. So he's got an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll go fine for the first hour, especially if he's sipping on the LMNT, yeah. and then hit like a good quick sugar yeah. sugar calorie drink. Right? Or you could do drugs like other uh, musicians. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old school. We didn't way. want to mention that option. <laughs> but, uh, we've seen it done. Don't do drugs, kids. That's a terrible idea. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles, or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit, and that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.